Sony's offices in London the other day to check out the PlayStation Classic. Yeah, very excited about that. And what we thought we'd do is compare it to another retro console which came out last year, the SNES Classic. Bless you. The SNES or SNES or Super NES, stop it! Or Super Nintendo Entertainment System or Snintendo Entertainment System or Stend Entertem was Nintendo's much anticipated follow up to 1983's NES or Famicom if you want to get Japanese about this. It was an instant smash hit, selling nearly 50 million units worldwide and shifting its initial stock in Japan so fast that the Japanese government asked them to schedule future stock releases. And it was only shipped at night to avoid being targeted by the Yakuza. But enough about a criminal organisation bent on weaponising console supremacy, let's talk about Sega, who were very much engaged with Nintendo in a bitter war throughout the 90s. The Soup Tender Tain was positioned against the Genesis, and while both had had lots of wonderful games, it would appear the N Stendertem came out on top, shifting 2 million more units than the Genesis in the United States. And where did it all begin? With 8 launch titles across Japan, the US and Europe. And today I'm going to play them and sort of review them as I go. Are you ready? Then let's do this. <laughs> Inject this music into my veins! God, I want a race! The legendary F-Zero franchise began right here on the SNES. A futuristic racing game set in the year 2560, the title boasts four characters and 15 different tracks. Naturally, I went with the little pink car that somehow crammed a max speed of 478 kilometers per hour under the bonnet, also known as the Stingray. And wouldn't you know it, F-Zero is as fun to play as it is to listen to. Partaking in a Grand Prix or practice race, you can drift, boost over jumps, and if you get into a little snafu crash-wise, there's a strip of magic repair tarmac that'll refill your durability. And you may well need to do that too, as racers will frequently get in your way as you try to overtake, sending you bouncing off the walls like you're in a dangerously out of control game of pinball. Bagel tear? What did we first? Oh lord! Hit your opponents too hard, and they explode! Which is horrific, but Wikipedia notes that in-universe, F-Zero was created by multi-billionaires with lethargic lifestyles, so I don't think they care about the human cost. Celebrated by critics at the time for its graphical realism, and celebrated by critics now for its influence on futuristic racing and just racing genres as a whole, F-Zero received an average review score of 82.83% on game rankings. A scrolling shooter originally seen in Japanese arcades a year prior, Gradius 3 is the sort of typical looking hard as nails space title that would have most modern players rolling their eyes. But you know what? I'm gonna say it! I don't care that you broke your elbow. I like it. The fun twist G3 has over its perceived sea of near identical contemporaries is its customizable approach to power ups. Choosing from a set menu of powers or assembling your own, the gameplay takes on a sort of the weakest link banking system, wherein the more power up thingies you collect, the further along your upgrade path you move. Will you cash in your MacGuffins for an increase in movement speed, the first enhancement in your chosen path, or will you save up for the fourth, fifth, or sixth? It took me a minute to get the hang of it, but the risk-reward approach to blasting away the Bacterion Empire's finest makes it all the more compelling. It's still hard, of course, and has quite the learning curve. Surprise! This guy shoots back. Now there's scenery to dodge. Look, people are shooting at you from the ceiling. Here comes a giant sand dragon that slows the game to a crawl. Gradius 3 was received well by critics, earning an average of 77.5% on game rankings. Another Nintendo console launch, another Pilot Wings, this time the first. If you're unfamiliar, Pilot Wings is a long running Nintendo franchise where you have to earn your license in different aerial disciplines and typically shows off what new Blimp Tendo hardware is capable of. Here's Tony! He's going to teach us about the basics of landing aircraft and skydiving for accuracy, whatever that means. I did very quickly forget, however, that controls were inverted. Why am I going down? Steady. Steady. Hold it steady. Yeah, looks like a perfect landing to me. Here's Shirley now. She's going to teach us all about the rocket belt. How hard can it be? 
Right, of course. Oh, really, Shirley? Thanks! I had a bit of trouble with the skydiving, particularly steering on descent, but I did manage to acclimatise to the controls relatively easily. Also, doesn't it look great? Making the most of the SNES's so-called Mode 7 capabilities, where 3D graphics are imitated by rotating and scaling flat objects, Pilot Wings blew players away at the time, and you can see why. Right, Rocket Belt take two here. Let's go. And perfect! I won't judge on appearance. Jesus, Shirley, just let me have the compliment! Shirley's toxic tutoring aside, the game was a technical marvel and paved the way for a franchise not shy of showing off what Nintendo consoles could do. 81.5% on game rankings. The legendary SimCity joined the US launch lineup of the SNES, and unlike other versions of the game, had the direct involvement of Nintendo to ensure it was suited to the hardware. And what do you know, they did a great job. SimCity sold in excess of 2 million units on the SNES and is widely considered one of the greatest video games of all time, but what do I know? I'm just an idiot reading you facts from Wikipedia, so let's get stuck into the game. Founding the city of Triple 69, nice, I plonked down a rough outline of road and surrounded it with housing, commercial and industrial zones, and a little bit of parkland for good measure. That parkland would surely override the environmental impact of the coal power station belching smoke into the sky above the metropolis, I reassured myself, jankily connecting the power cables to the various city sectors. I created a stadium for the 69ers to showcase their sports time dominance. built my house amongst the peons and lowered taxes to ensure re-election, and then unleashed a kaiju because I didn't want to seem too desperate for votes. As Nintendo was involved in porting SimCity, the kaiju has been replaced with Bowser searching for Mario. That's nice. Finally, the game let me create a transit system with no stops, dooming commuters to a life of imprisonment circling the city. I love it. 78.58% according to game rankings. 94%. A 94% average rating. Let's just get that out of the way first, because Super Mario World was a flipping game changer. In colour? Check. Introduced Yoshi? Check. Best selling SNES game at 20 million units sold? Big old check. Set in the fantastical world of Dinosaur Land, Princess Toadstool's only gone and got herself kidnapped again, and it's up to Mario, whether he be big, small, or throwing a fireball, to save the day. Oh, did I mention the music is bloody amazing? Because it very much is. But let's talk about Yoshi, or Yoshi if you want to get different pronunciation about this. The adorable little dinosaur that could. You begin by finding his charming abode, but he's not there! Where is he? Waiting for you in an egg. And yes, you can ride him, and yes, he can consume certain enemies to have powers of his own. And yes, this is the first game where you can sacrifice him to make a jump. I'm sorry, Yoshi! Super Mario World was a natural evolution of the plucky plumber's side-scrolling adventures, introducing new characters and gameplay mechanics that not only provided a blueprint for future Mario titles, but revolutionised the side-scrolling genre too. Again. Although if these things would stop bursting out of the stage to scare me, I'd appreciate it. Oh, Jesus! You know earlier when I was talking derogatorily about side-scrolling space shooters? Yeah, well, I'm sorry to say that this is one of them. For me, at least. People are entitled to the video game. For Clemens. Yeah. But I ain't spending any time on it. A partial port, in that it borrows stages and enemies from R-Type 2, Super R-Type is, in my experience at least, a very by-the-books shooter. Enemies come from the right, you shoot them, they drop power up sometimes, you die in one hit, you have to start all over again. What fun. That last part was an issue noted by a review back in 1991, which honestly, I felt quite vindicated to read given I typed this script with my soft 2021 gaming hands, pampered and spoiled with my quick saves and checkpoints. Joking aside though, most games used to be like this, however when compared to fellow launch title Gradius 3, there just isn't enough to Super R-Type to ever make me want to come back to it. The game is as much about dying so much you learn enemy patterns like the back of your hand as it is actual skill, and no, of course it shouldn't have to hold your hand, but getting wiped out by an attack you've never seen before isn't so much a learning experience as it is a reason to switch off the game and play something else. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anyway, that's why I'm not a big fan, and it earned an average of 61% on game rankings.
Oh yeah, here we go, sports time! I've played a football game before. Oh, David, what did they do to your beautiful face? And I've also watched football. But even so, I'm going to give this everything I've got. Oh, Jesus, look how he's kicking it right at us. He's going to knock the picnic over. Somehow, in Super Soccer for the SNES, the USA is rated better than some of the South American teams. And, and France, France? Come off it. Time to teach them a lesson with good old England and their very English sounding team consisting of Blake, Walt, Brock, Shaw, and Dusty. Yep. So I'm beginning to understand why the US team is rated so highly. Good God, I was bad at this one. Ignoring the fact that the depth perception is horrific and every tackle is an ankle dislocating red cardable offence, half the goals aren't even going in. I mean, I know VAR is controversial, but you have to imagine it to be able to verify the legitimacy of some of these goals. Hell, a third official with their back turned could do a better job than wherever they dug up this guy. You yeah. f***ing suck. The AI is absolutely punishingly brutal, teleporting to your position and regaining possession after tackles like they never even lost it. Penalties didn't go much better because, surprise surprise, the AI is telepathic and most of their shots went through my keeper, right through him. Might be one to play with a friend then. 79.5% on game rankings and I need a lie down. Oh yeah, here we go, sports time! I've played a tennis game before. You're not a god, are you, Cappuccino? You're just pretty good at tennis, oh, for fuck's sake. And I've also watched tennis, but I'm still going to give this everything I've got. Nice music, Super Tennis! Out of a choice of such magnificent looking players, there's only one tennis superstar I've got my eye on. <laughs> Getting real tennis on the Game Boy vibes from this one. Nearly impossible to tell when to swing your racket resulting in impotent flailing. A lack of clear power indication causing your shots to inexplicably go out half the time. Oh yes, this is early Nintendo System Tennis at its finest. Jill was absolutely on one with the aces. Yeah, you get that shit yeah. out of here. I did manage an ace myself, but it was clear Jill was the better tennis player, so we greeted one another for a post-match keys keys, and it was off to our next tournament. Still did better than Linda though, which makes you wonder just what the hell went on in her game. Super Tennis is a pretty game with vibrant colours, nice music, and some lovely idle animations. I wish I was better at it, but I've got time. If I don't master the sports today, I will master them tomorrow. And that is a promise. 87.33% on game rankings. And that 87.33% takes the average of the SNES launch lineup to 80.28%. And there we have it, every SNES launch title sort of reviewed in 2021. Which among them were your favourites? And why was one of them Super Mario World? Hmm, I wonder. Why not share this video with your friends? Like it, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter. There will be more of these. I promise they're coming. They're slowing down, but they are coming. I promise you that. Thank you so much for watching. Look after yourselves, and I'll see you very soon. Bye!